Is keto bad? Do nutritionists know what they're talking about? In the last video of the series, I thought it was too important to not address these crucial questions. Welcome to the series, I'm Alicia and I'm so excited you're here. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Today is the last video of the series. Don't worry though, I have been waiting to do this series for a really long time and I plan on continuing to share content and videos about healing relationships with food and diets and more every single week. I could not end this series without talking about this. Are diets bad? Keto, Whole30, intermittent fasting. What about nutritionists and RDs? Who should we listen to? Let's start with the basics. So you've learned these are all outer wisdom. They're tools. They're the frosting on the cake. I won't make you sit here and watch me draw it again. <laughs> Diets are tools, experts are tools, information is a tool. We need inner wisdom as a foundation. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you need to watch the rest of the series first because this won't make sense without that context. If we don't have that inner wisdom as a foundation, then we can let that outer wisdom take over and it's hard to listen to ourselves. Ultimately, we are gonna be our best expert of ourselves. We need to have our own connection to ourselves, to our bodies, to know how to cope with emotions and manage them before we can benefit and befriend our outer wisdom. That being said, tools are helpful. Outer wisdom can be helpful. The problem is when we ignore inner wisdom because we don't trust ourselves and we think all these outer wisdom tools know best. We think they're smarter than me and that's just not true. What is true is it's hard to look inward and see yourself. We don't trust ourselves. No one else can actually give us the answers that we want and that's scary. It would be easier for someone else to tell us, but they can't know our own bodies or minds. So it's our responsibility to do this inner work. If you choose to stay stuck in outer wisdom tools, then you go in circles, you know, and you end back up at square one, day one of the diet again and again, never actually losing the weight, never sustainably. And most importantly, you're never actually feeling peace with food or your health or your body. Also, if you choose to use outer wisdom tools, it is your responsibility to not just accept what an expert says blindly. You know, to really use the tool, you have to know how it functions. So is a diet, any diet right for you? Is it a good idea? Keto, Whole30, intermittent fasting, only you can know. Ask, we have to ask, how connected do I feel to my body, to my inner wisdom, to my emotional health? Am I looking for someone else to tell me what to do? Or am I trying to wisely incorporate the information as a tool. Have I researched the tool? Do I know what's happening to my body in ketosis or while I'm intermittent fasting? If I don't have the education, then it's a sign I might be looking for a quick fix. These outer wisdom tools only really become powerful and helpful when we understand how they work and we're not depending on them blindly. The same goes for nutrition help and expert opinions. Now, first of all, note that a nutritionist is sort of a fake title. Anyone in most states can call themselves a nutritionist. I could call myself a nutritionist, but I don't because it morally feels wrong because I'm not. I would call myself a health and nutrition coach or expert, even though I do feel very educated about nutrition, I'm not an RD. Now, what are RDs or RDNs? Registered dietitians or registered dietitian nutritionists? Yes. These people have completed a degree, probably have had supervised practice and they've passed an exam. If you want specific nutrition guidance for you, uh, you know, to fine tune your needs beyond general information, yes, an RD or an RDN is the way to go. But remember, they are still outer wisdom. They are an expert in nutrition, not an expert in you. And I've seen from experience, I've gone to RDs, I've gone through programs and certifications with RDs as colleagues. When it comes to the world of experts, there are good and bad, whether they have academic qualifications or not. Now, when I say good and bad, I mean good meaning they have your best interest in mind. So you know this, there are doctors, for instance, who have 
who might have your best interest in mind, but there are also those who don't. In the same way, there are RDs who might have your best interest in mind and those who don't. There are people who call themselves nutrition coaches who have your best interest in mind and those who don't. There are people making YouTube videos, making health content that have your best interest in mind and those who don't. Why? Because they're all human. It's not like good humans study one thing and bad study another. There's good and bad everywhere. And just like it's up to you to decide, you know, does this doctor's advice resonate with me? Does this business expert's advice resonate with me? It's also up to you to decide, do I want to, you know, listen to this nutritionist or RD or health coach or YouTuber? I think health coaching is great. And I know many health coaches that are really smart and compassionate and want what's best for you. And the same goes for RDs and many YouTubers, but not all. And these days, a red flag for me is anyone telling me, you should not listen to so-and-so, only listen to me because I'm right. These people aren't qualified and therefore they're wrong. I'm qualified because I have a degree and so I'm right. Sorry, I don't care if you have a degree. I'm not listening to you because you're thinking about you, not me. I'm sorry, I had to fit the rant in there somewhere. So some of you have asked, will I ever go on a diet again? Now I can't really say, maybe. I'm not planning on it now, you know, and feeling this peace within myself. I can't imagine subjecting myself to the torture of those rules again. It feels so good to not have the rules. And as someone who has loved having the rules and felt really safe with them, it feels freeing to say that now and mean it. But if I ever do go on a diet again, it will be very um, considered and from a foundation of inner wisdom. What I found for myself and watching others is by the time we feel that confidence that we accept ourselves more, we don't need to expend so much energy on all the outer stuff, those details that can get in the way and cause stress. Okay, so that is it for this video and really for the series. I can't believe it. Thank you so much to everyone who stuck with me through, you know, not even the series, but all these crazy years on this channel. The channel has evolved as I have, and we'll be moving forward with a mix of content, but we will be focusing more on healing relationships with food. I want to encourage people to find peace with food. It just feels so much better. Don't worry, I still will be cooking and doing recipes, but I'll also be talking about diets and dieting, mindfulness, inner and outer wisdom, and more. Our regular posting schedule is every Thursday. Some weeks we also post on on Mondays too. So I hope you will subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell and stick around. My goal is to help provide a middle way, a reasonable path where you can find confidence and trust in yourself. I think, you know, the pendulum swings and it's like so much sexier to be on the extreme, but it feels so much better to just be in the middle. You know best, you know, don't be afraid of getting to know and trust you. So please share in the comments, what was the most valuable thing you learned in this course and what do you want to see more of. And also for those of you who have been around, what do you love on the Mind Over Munch channel that you don't want to lose as we start to shift the content? Because I want to make sure that what you really love isn't forgotten. Please, if you found this series or video helpful, share it with someone or share it with your social media. I would love to grow this community to be, you know, a group of people who really want to not only make peace with their own bodies and health, but also with other people and how we communicate about food. I just wanna create a space that has so much less judgment and stress because it's not doing any of us any favors. All right, that's it for now. I'll be back next week on our regular posting schedule. And remember, it's all a matter of mind over munch.